Hi, and welcome to PowerViews. I'm Dan McDade, your host and president of Point Clear. PowerViews is dedicated to solving some of today's toughest marketing and sales challenges. My guest today is Ann Hanley. Ann is chief content officer of Marketing Profs and co-author of uh, with C. Chapman of Content Rules, How to Create Killer Blogs, pod Podcasts, Videos, eBooks, Webinars, and More that Engage Customers and Ignite Your Business. That was published by Wiley in 2010. She also writes for Marketing Profs, or she writes the Marketing Profs Daily Fix blog, and I found out last week she's a terrific photographer. You can check that out at Ann Hanley. Dot dot com. I, I wonder if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> and she also has a site that I enjoyed looking at called, Anar called Anarchy at AnnHanley.com. And there she writes, talks about marketing, and she shows off her cool glasses. <laughs> so Ann, welcome to Power Views. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, the first question is uh, just kind of a general one, but what's happening or not happening in 2012 so far from a sales and marketing standpoint that surprises you? Huh. Um you know, there have been a, a tremendous amount of changes in, in sales and marketing, I think, in, in 2012. Um, did you say what's not happening, actually? Well, either what's happening or not happening. What's happening you know, what, or not what, happening. What's happening that surprised you or what hasn't happened that surprised you? Yeah, I mean, you know, my, my um, bailiwick is really content, right? Looking at how content is really, or I guess how sales and, and marketing really is embracing content as a, as a cornerstone of what's going on these days, of, of how they're marketing and, and how they're telling their story. Um, and so some research that, that Marketing Pros did with the Content Marketing Institute last year um, showed that, you know, 90% of companies are using some sort of content in their marketing, right? They're using um, things like blogs and social media and webinars and podcasts like this one to tell their story to their broader audience to attract customers to them. Um, but what I think is surprising, you know, the, the what that research also showed that we did was that 40% of companies are struggling with how to tell that story in an engaging way. Um, so I think it's interesting when, when we talk about content, I think, and, and how it fits into sales and marketing and marketing automation, all the other things that, that kind of are, are, are part of the evolution of marketing. Um, but I think it's easy to say, like, you know, content is increasingly a big part of it. And while that's absolutely true, I still think that what we're seeing is a lot of companies struggling with how to tell their story, how to create compelling content, how to get people interested in the content that they're, that they're putting out there. Yeah, it's funny. Today there was a question out on one of the blogs, and it said, uh, you know, how can I write compelling content for my company? And yeah. I always have to laugh when I see that question. But, you know, it, it is something that we all struggle with. Um, yeah. What about uh, inbound and outbound marketing? I don't know if you have strong feelings about this. I know that there was a recent uh, report from, um, I think it was IDC, stating that, um, actually, I'm sorry, it was a corporate executive board stating that um, reps that, are primarily inbound responsive um, mm -hmm. tend to have very average results, and reps that are more proactive and are more outbound oriented, you know, tend to be the more exceptional reps. But still, in the marketing circles and the sales circles, there's a lot of talk about inbound versus outbound marketing. Is there a right answer to that, or is it a blend of both? Yeah, I mean, I think what you just said, I, I really do see it as a blend of both. I think that, you know, inbound marketing is the hot and sexy new thing. Everybody is talking about, like like I have, about, um, you know, tools that will, will allow you to draw customers to you through those inbound tactics. Um, but that doesn't mean that you should abandon outbound channels either. I think that those are channels that we know work, that they, that they, um, they do particularly well. But at the same time, you know, I think you've, you, you have a whole other set of tools in your arsenal. So the bottom line is I think if you use those two uh, together, you know, proactively and, and successfully, you will have more success. Um, I know there are some inbound marketers that take a real hard line and say, you know, don't do any broadcast, don't do any outbound. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't see it that way, and I think the content that we publish on Marketing Pros, you know, uh, bears that out as well. We ran a whole series on on marketing um, through radio, for example. It's a clear outbound tactic, you know. Um, I mean, I'm a huge, huge listener of NPR, a supporter of NPR, and you know, I I pay attention to the people who are broadcasting on there, who are advertising on there. So another example of a an outbound medium um, and mail. I mean, direct mail. I don't think is dead at all. I still think that that you know there's there's a place for it. Um, where I think you get into trouble is when you say, well, we only need those tactics. I do think that inbound is really important, but that doesn't mean that you that you need to abandon all the things you're already doing that you know work. And how about social media? There was an article published last week that said that, um, it, and that kind of surprised me. It said that about 85% of senior executives use social media to sort of stay in touch and stay connected yeah. with people, but but only about 15 or 16% of um, folks actually 
use social media for any kind of purchase. So it's really more of a stay connected or stay um, kind of a, a, a you know a stay informed about what's going on. But mm -hmm. where do you where do you see it now? Where do you see it going? You know, what's the what what's happening with social media right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that that people have really tried to shoehorn. Um, more lead gen tactics into social media. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that that's the best use of it. I think that can be a part of it. I think there are examples of companies that, that do do it pretty well, like Dell, for example, Amazon deals, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's pure lead gen. But I also think that social, in my mind, is, is really <coughs> it's part of the process, you know. So it is a great way to sort of, as you say, keep in touch. But more than that, to really to really nurture those leads, you know, to create those relationships so that ultimately they can go on to become, you know, a, an actual purchase. So I, I see social tools as being more um, more nurturing tools than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a little bit more than kind of keeping in touch. I don't think it's just customer service, for example. I don't think it's just, you know, sort of broadcast outreach, um, as we were just talking about, you know, sort of outbound versus inbound. I, I think it's definitely an opportunity to reach customers on a more intimate and, and personal level. Um, I mean, I know that, you know, when I'm when I'm on social media, that's what I do. I mean, I'm a brand. I'm marketing profs on Twitter, for example. I'm on the that channel on behalf of marketing profs, um, and I love talking to customers there. But I'm not necessarily expecting that each one is going to convert and become a pro member. You know, it's actually going <laughs> to buy a membership at marketing profs. I don't expect that all of them are going to attend our events, but yet, you know, they're getting to know us. They're getting to know me. They're getting to know our content. So I see it as a step in that process. Um, you know, the reality is there is a certain percentage of people who will never buy, right? I mean, you, you know this as well as anybody. They'll never convert. Um, but, you know, I'm not looking at those people. I'm looking for the ones that really do found a, a true connection with me. Um, and I would say that, you know, that there there is that conversion happening. It's just I think the challenge for marketers is how do we measure that? You know, how do you how do you quantify that? Um, that is a step in the process, and that's kind of where I see the industry right now. You brought up a good point. I know that Comcast has run some tests using um, social media and customer service, mm. um, and you know one of their objectives is, is to build the dialogue with the customer yeah. and actually make it more convenient to do business with the customer. In fact, we've th they've seen some substantial reductions in costs using social media and, and other uh, tools. And but ultimately, what they want to do is they want to convert that to a revenue generating opportunity. So that's you know one path that companies can take. We're more business to business oriented. Mm -hmm. That's a more business to consumer oriented type of a play. But I see that as you know being something that we'll see a lot more of as we go down the road here. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think that, you know, if you're a brand and you're in social channels and somebody talks to you, you know, somebody ats you, for example, on Twitter, um, I think there's that, you know, if you're not responding, you know, shame on you because it's yeah. like that's a clear opportunity. I see that all the time, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I I was on vacation with my daughter last February. We went down to um, a um, I, actually I don't even want to say it, but we went <laughs> we went to a hotel, we went to a resort, um, and so I you know called them out on Twitter, and it was actually a very positive thing to say we're having an awesome time, and thank you so much, and this is such a beautiful place. I mean, I have a hundred and something thousand followers on Twitter, which is you know I would think that as a brand you would want to pay attention to what I'm saying if I'm mentioning you and I never heard a peep so no, 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 that's terrible you know it's terrible but at the same time I don't think it's that unusual so what's really going on there you know are you really looking at the opportunities that are right in front of you or are you looking for you know for, for more if you're looking for more then start paying attention to those yeah. opportunities right in front of you but it's so funny because we had the same thing happen, and I won't call out the company, but it was a car <laughs> rental company, and yes. we got to the Phoenix airport, and there were no cars. You know, yeah. so I said, you know, how how surprising is it that we've all flown in and want a car that we've reserved? You know, it's, we have to both, you know, you have to reserve the car, and you have to give us the car too. Yeah, did you hear so, from uh, them at all? Didn't hear a word, and there right. were four of us actually together that were doing that, and we all tweeted it. So, um, you know, we kind of expected for something to happen, but nothing happened. So right, right. Um, and sometimes I feel like, you know, like I don't, I don't like the way that that companies or, or that you see people calling out brands in a negative way, which is why I thought my example was interesting because it was like I was calling them out in a positive way. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to say thank you, you yeah, know, or yeah, I appreciate that? That would have gone a long way. And instead, you know, not to hear a peep is just kind of odd, you know, so. Yeah. In fact, and I'll say this only because it's very positive. Intercontinental Hotels here has a very active uh, social media mm -hmm. program. And I actually heard the guy who runs it speak, and they look for opportunities like that. They're scouring, 
you know, uh, Twitter to look for people who are saying both good and bad things, and they have a reward system for the for the good ones, and then the bad ones they try to make good on them and they turn them into positive comments. So you know that that's a, that's a huge customer service opportunity there. Right, exactly, and you know, and it's a hu huge brand building opportunity too, right? Because then you know you're not just talking to one person. Obviously, you know all of the all of their followers and and all of your followers see that interaction. Um, so that to me seems like a really, really simple thing that brands can do that, you, that a lot of them don't, you know, which is puzzling to me. I guess uh, switching gears a little bit, Neil Rackham was speaking, I believe it was the BMA last week or within the last couple of weeks anyway, and he said that um, it's really odd that marketing and sales have identical agendas or identical goals yet they sometimes operate like ships passing in the night. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you're seeing changing in the alignment between marketing and sales. Are we making progress or are we, are we uh, stuck where we've been now since uh, I think the earliest article I read about it was 1993? <laughs> mm, mm, that's really, yeah, that's that's funny. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I like to think that things are improving, um, but sometimes when I, I talk to large organizations, you know, in a B2B company that, you know, you still do have sales and marketing functioning in silos. Um, I think some of the content stuff that I've seen actually does bring those two camps closer together. I'm seeing a little bit more of an integration between um, between the content that marketing is putting together that they're, that they're targeting for salespeople to use in the field. Um, so that kind of stuff, I think, is a, is a very positive um, evolution. Um, but I mean, I, I wish I could quote stats off the top of my head that would maybe show that 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 would give credence to what I'm saying. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. I'm curious to what you know. What what do you see out there? Because I'm guessing you have a pretty pretty close look at this as well. Yeah, and, and I don't see a lot happening, and particularly on the larger companies where there's mm -hmm. so many layers of management. I still see the same old problem where marketing is creating leads and being rewarded on the basis of the quantity of leads and the cost of leads, and then yeah. sales, of course, is being created on, on the basis of revenue. Um, I know that I went to the Serious Decisions Conference a couple of, uh, or maybe a month or so ago, and there was an awful lot of talk about alignment and how not so much that alignment is happening, but when it, where it does happen, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And obviously, sales enablement, I think, is probably the phrase that I heard used a lot out there, and I know you guys are, you know, really helpful from a sales enablement standpoint, you know, helping guide companies on how can you enable the sales force with the right content at the right time. So yes, exactly right, right. But I don't see, you know, big strides being made, and, and um, it's unfortunate because it's incredibly costly. Yeah, yeah, I know, I agree. Um, yeah, it's like I, I, I guess from, from my perspective, I do see the companies that are doing it well are doing it particularly well, so it sounds like that's kind of what, what you've seen as well. Um, but, I, you know, I do see things like marketing getting a better sense of, you know, for example, not just putting out a white paper and handing it to their salespeople and then say, okay, here, like, you know, th use this as a nurturing tool. But I see them actually having a little bit more of a dialogue going about how do we actually create the kind of stuff that will help you sell. Um, so I, I have seen evidence of that, you know, uh, I, I guess a little bit, um, not wholesale, but I but I've seen I've seen companies doing that particularly well, and, and you know, just just more broadly right now. I guess something like um, fewer reps are making quota right now as compared to 2006, and we're mm -hmm. about to kind of round the turn on the first half of the year being behind us, the second half of the year being in front of us, which to me is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I feel like it's still 2011. <laughs> but, um, when you know, did that you, happen? I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the older I get, the faster they turn. <laughs> but do you, do you have anything in particular you recommend at this point to senior executives as they're looking at the year and, you know, what, what can we do at this point? What should we be doing better? Um, and is it too late? <laughs> yeah, really, is it too late or should we just – close it up. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's definitely not too late. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that are are, um, are increasingly in the forefront. You know, it's like the content thing that I talked about earlier about how I think um, execs should really be paying attention to the, kind, the quality of the content they're producing and not just, you know, any old content. Um, good enough isn't good enough anymore, at least when it comes to content. You've really got to be producing stuff that is going to connect with your audiences in a significant way. Um, you know, things like social media is, is great, but bearing in mind that social is, is just a set of tools and mm -hmm. that if you haven't, if you don't think about what your messaging is, if you're not telling your story in a compelling way, then, um, then social media isn't really going to do much for you. Um, I think it, it really is learning how to use those tools effectively and, and how to use it to tell your story and to connect with your audiences in a more meaningful way. 
Um, and then mobile, I think, would be the, the last one that I'd be thinking about. Um, and, and mobile in this isn't just about, you know, making your site, um, you know, accessible on a mobile device, although that's kind of a, a minimum, right? That's kind of a given. Um, but also paying attention to some of the mobile platforms and some of the mobile tools that are out there, um, things like Instagram, for example. Um, <laughs> I, which, just, I just started with that Saturday. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah, follow I've been having, having some fun. What's that? Did you follow me yet? Because I will, I will totally follow you back. Okay, well I'll do that because I just started experimenting with it. I took a picture of my wife at the kitchen table and she got mad at me, so <laughs> I switched over to the birds in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I try not to take pictures of family for that reason too. Yeah. They're just way too picky about it. Yeah, that's right. I do my dogs a lot, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, have we missed anything? I mean, what what else comes to your mind that people should be thinking about uh, at this point of the year, or you know? Um, We've talked about mobile, we've talked about social, we've talked about content. Uh, is there anything else that you can think of that we should r be recommending to our, our, our viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the, the bottom line for me is that, you know, all those things are really just a set of tools, you know, and that, the, like, like any tool, you know, in the right hands, it, it can do uh, a lot of great good, and, and in the wrong hand, it can cause kind of a mess. So really being clear about why you're using those tools, really thinking through the strategy behind them. Um, a lot of companies that I talk to, for example, will say, you know, oh, well, we need to be on Twitter. We need a Twitter strategy, which is kind of ridiculous, right, when you think about it. Um, or we need a Facebook strategy is what I'm hearing a lot recently. Or we need a Pinterest strategy, for example. And, you know, all that stuff is just silly because those are tools, right? Those are tools that you can use to, you know, extend your brand, tell your story, all the stuff that we've been talking about. Um, but really, it, it has to stem from strategy and, and getting your messaging right, getting your story right, and then allowing the tools to help you amplify it from there. It needs to be the same story, too, across all of those. Yes. I think that's the other thing we see is, you know, different stories coming from the same company. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I, I appreciate your uh, comments today. How can the audience get in touch with you if they have any kind of follow-up questions or just want to maybe send you a picture? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Send me a picture. Um, I, you can reach me at, at ann at marketingprofs.com, um, or you can reach me at marketingprofs on Twitter or through my personal website, which is annhanley.com. Um, or you can just Google me. I, I think I'm, I have successfully taken the, I now ha successfully own the whole first page of, of Google when you Google Ann Hanley. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. That took me a while. I had to, I had to bump out uh, Mary Ann Hanley, who's a former state rep from Connecticut, but she retired. Uh -oh. <laughs> so now I'm in. I'm good. Good for you. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say again, annhanley.com, you, you talk and write about marketing and you show off other cool glasses that you have. <laughs> I really liked when I got a chance to visit that site. But thanks again for being with us today. Thanks, Jim. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, viewing Power Views today. I want to thank the audience for taking time to do so. For now, this is Dan McDade signing off. Thank you for watching. <laughs>